So here were the solutions I made up. If you remember, in each case, I had a total volume of 12.5 for my different solutions. And what was different between them, same amount of the trinder, the coloring agent, what was different between them was the amount of the sodium salicylate that I put in there. And I've just measured the absorbance for those. So now what I need to do is calculate the concentration of each of those solutions. Okay, and again, I'm going to be focusing on talking about the concentration of the sodium salicylate, just thinking of the purple color as being the coloring agent that I'm putting in. Okay, now you need to think about two things. First is, what was the starting concentration of this in moles per cubic decimeter? And remember your dilution equation, C1V1 is equal C2V2. And I'm going to go back and use my original one. Remember, this was my play concentration of the sodium salicylate. So I took 0.5 cubic centimeters of that sodium salicylate, that's 8.69 times 10 to the minus three moles per cubic decimeter. And then I added enough other stuff, water and trinder reagent, to make the total volume 12.5, okay? So now I can calculate that new concentration, that new diluted concentration, which is what I'll pop in here. So you need to use your concentration, right? And do that calculation five times. So now we're going to pretend that this column is filled with the concentrations that you've calculated simply by using C1V1 equals C2V2. At this point, we're going to go back to Beer's law. The absorbance is epsilon L times the concentration. We've measured the absorbance for each concentration, therefore we can calculate epsilon L. And there's two ways you can do this. You can do it algebraically. You can say, well, I've got my absorbance, absorption for one, two, three, four, five. I calculated the concentration for each of those. And so for each of those pairs of data, I put in the absorbance, concentration, calculate epsilon L. For this one here, absorbance 0.495, concentration, whatever you determine this to be, get epsilon L. So you can get five different values of epsilon L and then get the average value that you can use for the second part of the experiment, the unknown determination. The nicer way to do it, however, is graphically, because let's look at this relationship here. Absorbance is proportional to concentration. So if I plot out a graph of concentration C along the x-axis and absorbance on the y-axis, my data should have a nice straight line. OK, and by the way, because absorbance is directly proportional to concentration, if you have zero concentration, you shouldn't have any absorption. You can put in the origin, plot the best straight line through that, and the slope of that line should be epsilon L. OK, absorbance is constant epsilon L times the concentration. The value of that constant is the slope of the graph. So again, if you want to do it graphically, plot your graph out, measure the slope. And of course, you can do this in Excel if you know how and get your value of epsilon L. So either algebraically or graphically, now you know epsilon L for our pretty purple substance. So now let's get to the point of this in terms of proper life. And let's go ahead and analyze some aspirin. So I went to a store to buy some aspirin. I'm not going to tell you which one. There's no product placement going on here. But anyway, I took one of those tablets. I crunched it up. I treated it as in the original steps one to three. So in other words, I put all the aspirin in it. I dissolved up as much as I could, put in some sodium hydroxide to get up and added enough water to add to 250 cubic centimeters. Filtered out because there's always a little bit of filler there and then make the solution up to 250 cubic centimeters. So now I have a 250 cubic centimeter solution that contains all of the aspirin that got converted to sodium salicylate from my tablet. I then took 2.5 cubic centimeters of that solution, mixed it with the 10 cubic centimeters of Trinder reagent. So again, 2.5 plus 10 is the 12.5 cubic centimeters of solution. Then I measured the absorbance 
three times for that and then I did two more tablets so there we are first tablet second tablet third tablet there's the absorption for each one measured out three times okay obviously there shouldn't be any difference and you can see they're pretty close to each other and now we can use these data to finish off so again calculations um, I'm going to give you a link for the data sheet to which you upload your answers to these calculations. So first was, what was the average absorbance of the unknown? On the previous slide, you had nine values. What was the average? Now, you calculated epsilon L. You either did it algebraically or you did it graphically. It's the same epsilon L because it's the same purple color that comes from the Trinder reagent with sodium salicylate. So you can just use that epsilon L with the absorbance of the unknown to get the concentration of the unknown solution. And that's the concentration of the unknown solution in terms of sodium salicylate. OK, now, of course, that concentration was diluted. So now you need to work backwards to get to the concentration in the original 250 cubic centimeters. Once you got the concentration of aspirin in that 250 cubic centimeters, you can get the mass of the aspirin in that 250 cubic centimeters. And if the tablet, each tablet weighed about 100 milligrams, what was the percentage of aspirin in those tablets? Do those calculations, pop your answers into my online answer sheet. Again, if you're given the PowerPoint that accompanies this video, you can just click on the live link. Alternatively, the link has been sent to your teacher. So a little bit more complicated. Hopefully you followed it because what we did here is what people do around the world in pharmaceutical labs or generally analytical chemistry labs using spectroscopy to determine how much of a particular substance you have. Anyway, um, as I said in the previous one, hopefully I will get to see you all in three dimensions coming to do some experiments in our lab. Do hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.